So when it comes to cutting material in the home shop, I would guarantee that the vast majority of us have a saw very similar to this. The Harbor Freight 4 to 6 band saw, which is pretty iconic really in the home machinist world. Very capable little saw, affordable, and with a few minor modifications, uh, pretty reliable. At least this one has been. There's been one thing that I wish that this saw had ever since the day that I got it that it doesn't and that is a coolant system not a mist coolant system not a drip coolant system but a full-fledged recirculating flood coolant system it makes saw blades last much longer and you just get a better finish better cut I mean all around nicer so what I want to do is make a coolant system for this that's easy to install doesn't require any major modifications to this saw, allows you to still use it in the vertical position, and allows you to move this thing around and not splash coolant everywhere and make a big mess. So let's get started coming up with a design and put a coolant system on this thing. I think it'll be fun. So right off the bat, let's talk about what I don't want, and that is some big, huge pan under this thing that has coolant exposed inside the shop that stops me from moving this saw around and makes a huge mess. What I do want is a small coolant tank or sump, and as small of, as small of a drip pan as possible, trying to take advantage as much as we can of the current design without doing too much changes to this thing and still get the desired result, which is 90% of our coolant returned back to the sump and not a big mess on the floor. So after several long minutes of thought, this is what I've come up with my cardboard aided design. This is the base of the coolant tray that will go on this saw. So we've got a, a ledge here that will be slightly bent up. That'll catch any coolant that goes down through the vice area of this saw. Because this saw will be set on level ground, we'll level the saw slightly cant the uh, bottom of the tray. That way any coolant that gets in here will run down to this back corner and then down to the sump. So this will obviously have a small lip around it. We're not gonna make some huge coolant tray because it doesn't need to be. It just needs to be big enough to catch the coolant. And what I plan to do to attach this to the saw, because I'm a welder by trade, I am gonna weld this, TIG weld this, to the base of the saw. And not only will that seal this around the legs, but it'll also add a lot of rigidity uh, to the base of the saw. Not that it needs it when it's put together proper. I hear people say that these are floppy and you know not rigid. I don't think that's true at all. I think uh, they're plenty rigid when the bolts are good and tight. So, let's cut this out of sheet metal more carefully than we cut it out of cardboard. And uh, yeah. So here's a small piece of the steel that I'm going to be using. This is the Starrett sheet metal gauge. And 20 gauge is the steel that I'm going to be using. 20 gauge happens to be around 40 thousandths or one millimeter, in case you were wondering. So the cabinets that I have on the wall had angled tops on them so you couldn't set things on top of the cabinets as well as you know, load them up on the inside. 
I took those angled tops off because I wanted to be able to set stuff on top of my cabinets and I kept them and this is the steel from it. So I'm glad I did and uh, now I've got more storage and some extra steel. <laughs> So we've got our coolant pan laid out on this piece of sheet metal here. I need to take it over to the bandsaw, cut out the profile, and then we'll attempt to bend up these sections here. I don't have a sheet metal brake, nor do I have a set of pliers with the wide jaws that you would use for drip edge or gutter work, which would really be handy to bend up these small sections, but we'll try the vise. Maybe that'll work. But let's first get it cut out. So lucky for you, I lost the bandsaw footage. Actually, the file got corrupted of me cutting this piece out, but you didn't miss much because cutting sheet metal in a bandsaw is obnoxiously loud. Here I'm bending up the pieces in the vise, the pieces that are the bends that I can make in this vise anyway, which was probably 50% of the bends that needed to be made, and the others I just uh, done the old-fashioned way with a mallet and, uh, and an auto body dolly. It worked pretty well, actually. So that sheet metal actually bent pretty well. We'll weld up these corners and stuff, that way it doesn't leak. Got a couple little holes there that'll have to be welded up as well. This will get painted. But let's test fit it. Is it gonna fit at all? Yeah, actually, fits pretty good. And actually lines up really good. It'll be welded here. That is awesome. I think it's actually gonna work really well. That's a problem. How I didn't catch that, I don't know. So this will just need to be shortened a bit, but I don't think that it will matter because it really only needs to come out to there anyway. So we'll cut about an inch off that. So the fitment of this pan is surprisingly good. Got the saw leveled. I don't want this pan to be level though. I want it to slope down to this back corner where my drain is gonna be. So I want this whole pan in relationship to the saw to be angled uh, down to this back corner. So I've made sure with a level inside of the pan to make sure that it does have that slope in it. I've marked the legs of the saw because that's where I'm gonna be welding this pan to the feet or to the, to the base of the saw. We'll take it, this pan over to the welding bench, weld up the corners, clean it up, get me to remove all the paint from the areas we're gonna be welding and start putting it on. I think it's gonna work good.
believe I'd call that a success, at least in the trial stage anyway. So why you weren't looking, I welded up a coolant tank for this thing. It's four inches by six inches by 10 inches. It's gonna bolt up under the foot of this thing. The pump will actually go down inside of this. Let me show you where it's gonna go. I have not got the pump yet. Hopefully in the next day, I'll get that. So that'll just be bolted to the leg here and uh, you can remove it if you want to with some thumb screws. That's the idea. So hopefully that works. Let's see if we can get that mounted up. Ow. Oh gosh, that hurt. Here, show me your boo boo. It's here. Where? Right there. Oh, you can kiss it. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
fit. Better fit. Ta -da. So this is some flexible blue quarter inch OD tubing and that's what I'm going to be running the coolant from the pump to the valve and then from the valve to the distributor which we still have to make. It's just a compression fitting and then this is just a simple on off valve. So there's the coolant tank all painted. Here's the pump that I'm going to be using. It, this is the pump out of the big do-all vertical band, so I pulled it out of that. Because I ordered another one exactly like this, but my order was delayed, so I decided to pull this one out of that saw and then put a new one in it. But Little Giants, the maker, $54 from Amazon, I believe, 120 volts, so it's the same voltage as this saw. I can wire it into the circuitry of this saw. That way the main on-off switch turns on or off the pump. I'll also have a switch here where I can disable the pump if I want. But this puts out enough coolant for the big do-all saw and pumps through its entire coolant system, so I know it'll do all right for this little saw. Plus, I custom built the tank for this to fit in. That holds quite a bit actually. 
So this is pretty exciting. I've wanted a coolant system on this saw since the day that I got it. Unfortunately, we are not going to be able to see this thing run this week. There's still so much to do, and I don't have time to, to finish it off. Still need to still need to make the distributor for this thing. Still need to test run it, although I'm pretty confident that that pump will have no problem supplying coolant to the blade. Got to tie in the electricity for the pump so it works the way that I want to. We need to test run this thing to make sure that the blade doesn't carry around a bunch of fluid and it leak outside of the pan. I mean, on and on and on. There is still quite a bit to do. Although I don't have a lot of time in this and I do believe about anybody who has some basic hand tools and the drive to try to do it could achieve the same thing. So uh, no, no rocket surgery here. So that's it. Tune in next week if you want to see this thing succeed or fail. But eventually it will succeed, I assure you. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, and anybody who supported me on this project. Much appreciated. This will look better once it gets all one color. So that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. to break through